بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى من والاه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله ورمضان مبارك رمضان مبارك رمضان كريم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته upon you all uh, we are in the last ten nights of Ramadan and we need to remind ourselves that after the twenty seventh night it's not like it all goes downhill from there right uh, because the Prophet said Seek it out in the last 10 nights. And sometimes if you think that it's the 27th, that's fine. If you think it's the 25th, that's fine. But sometimes you get a little busy, right? And you want to celebrate your children's birthday when it comes, but you know, it may fall on a weeknight. And so what do you do? You postpone it to the weekend. You're still celebrating the birthday of your child. You're just postponing it a few days, right? You postpone it to the weekend where you can really celebrate. This is Allah's night. He chooses when to celebrate it. He chooses where to put it. And so sometimes he'll put it on the 27th. He might put it on the 23rd. He might put it on the 29th, right? But we seek it out every single night of the last 10 nights, especially because we have moon fighting between the sighting and the birth. So every night is an odd night. فَطْلُبُوهَا فِي الْعَشِ الْأَوَاخِرِ Seek it out in the last ten nights every night. Kullu laylatin, laylatul qadr. Every night is laylatul qadr. And the next person you meet is Sayyidina al Khidr. Right? That's the next person you meet. Right? So this is what we learn from God's chosen people, the Sudanese. Right? For they say that, right? Every night, right, Ramiz? Every night is laylatul qadr. And the next person you meet is Sayyidina al Khidr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, just camel backing on what Imam Zaid just mentioned, that we are the ummah that reflects on the Quran. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not think deeply? Do they not celebrate the Quran? Or is it that some hearts are yet under their own class blocks? Right? And so let us release our hearts this evening. Let us reflect together, especially on a night as momentous as tonight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his majestic book, Inna anzannahu fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr ya khayrun min al fi shahr, tanazzalu al malaikatu wa ruhu fiha, bi idni rabbihim min kulli amr. Salam. Hiya hatta matra al fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzannahu fi laylatul qadr. Indeed, we, and this is the, the pronoun of, of grandeur, we, uh, this is the pronoun of power and grandeur, royalty. We sent it down on laylatul qadr. We sent what down? We sent it down. What is it? It doesn't refer to anything. There's nothing. There's no verse in which the Quran was mentioned, and yet it is without need of introduction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we sent it down on Layth al-Qadr. Everyone knows what it is. There's no argument about it. We sent it down. And this is one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, that He venerates His book, that He, that he, he lends honor to, 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 the, to the book by not even introducing it. Oh, the Qur'an, right? The Qur'an came down and we sent it on Layth al-Qadr. No. Allah doesn't say that. The Qur'an, Jibreel salam, brought the Qur'an to the Prophet salam, and we sent it down, by the way, on Laylatul Qadr. No, there's no reference to the Qur'an because its, it's reputation precedes itself. Everyone understands that it refers to the Qur'an. This is one of the ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has uh, honored the book by not even repeating, but Kalla idha balagatin hulqum, Allah says. Kalla idha balagatin hulqum. Nay, when it reaches the throat, and this is in Surah Al-Waqa'ah, and there's no context for it. Surah Al-Waqa'ah, no context for it. When it reaches the throat, what is it? The, the ruh, the soul, as on its way out of the body. And so sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will not even mention what He's talking about in order to, in order, because it's without need of mention. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ قَدْرٍ On Laylatul Qadr. Now this is incredible because this is the first time that Laylatul Qadr is mentioned and for the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions it's the first time they've even heard of something called Laylatul Qadr, right? We sent it down on Laylatul Qadr. So what is Laylatul Qadr? 
Just imagine, just imagine if this is the first time that you've, been, that you've heard this verse. Indeed, we sent it down on Laylatul Qadr. There's no context, it's from a vacuum. It's literally out of thin air. Indeed, we sent it down on Laylatul Qadr. Wait, what is we? Who is we? And what is it? And what is Laylatul Qadr? <laughs> you have all these questions already from the very beginning. The suspense that is created just from the very first verse. Indeed, we, we know what Laylatul Qadr is. What is Laylatul Qadr? It's the night that the Quran was first revealed. We all know that because we've been taught. But the companions, this is the first time they've heard it. The kuffar, it's the first time they heard it. The Prophet, first time he's heard it. By the way, by the way, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bin qalam, allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. By the way, Ya Rasulullah, those, those five verses, Ya Rasulullah, they were revealed to you on Laylatul Qadr. It's the first time the Prophet heard it. He didn't hear what Laylatul Qadr is. But yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it as though it's known. It's a definite through through idafa and, and it's a definite through the alif la, right? The night of Al Qadr. It's like you may not know what it is, but that doesn't mean it is not known. You may not know what it is, you may not understand what it is, but that doesn't mean that it's not known to its people. And who are its people at that time? The angels. They all have been waiting for Laylatul Qadr. From the very beginning of creation, they've been waiting for Laylatul Qadr. From the very beginning of creation, they've been waiting for Laylatul Qadr. Because the world came into existence from non-existence for Laylatul Qadr. For the sake of Laylatul Qadr. You don't believe me. Some of you are looking at me like you don't believe me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, Khalaq al-Insan. The Lord of Compassion, He taught the Qur'an. And that begs a question, does it not? He taught the Qur'an. What's the question that begs? That's begged. Huh? To whom? Right? To whom? Right? That's the question that's begged. Ar-Rahman, He taught the Qur'an. To whom? Khalaq al-Insan. Now, we know why the Insan was created. To receive the teaching of the Qur'an. So from the very beginning, the teaching of the Qur'an had to be received. And so man was created to, to receive that teaching. The entire world was created for Laylatul Qadr to, to, to come, to arrive. And so it was known to the angels. It was known to its people. And this was the first time that the Prophet and the companions had ever even heard of it, Laylatul Qadr. And I can't even translate it for you. The night of Al-Qadr. You can't translate Al-Qadr because it means different things. And look at this beautiful verse. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And what will make you fathom Laylatul Qadr? What will make you fathom Laylatul Qadr? Allahu Akbar. Whom is addressed in this verse? The Ummah? What will make you fathom Laylatul Qadr? What will make you understand Laylatul Qadr? Is the Ummah addressed in this verse? Who's addressed in this verse? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Who's addressed? Who is you? Who is you? Humans? All of Nas? Ayyayun Nas? The Ummah? Huh? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's singular masculine. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ When we say, As-salamu alayka, we say we're saying that to one person, one man. Now because of the ka. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the Prophet, what will make you fathom Laylatul Qadr? <laughs> the Prophet is being asked that question. What will make you, Ya Rasulullah, fathom Laylatul Qadr? Allahu Akbar. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was the only witness to Laylatul Qadr. He was the only one there. He was the only one who could explain to us what Laylatul Qadr was. In fact, he came to Khadija and he explained to her what happened. So what will make you, Ya Rasulullah, fathom Laylatul Qadr? And then who's asking the question? Allah is asking the question. If there's anything that can make the Prophet ﷺ fathom Laylatul Qadr, Allah would have given it to him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this beautiful verse, the second verse of Surah Al-Qadr, He is using the language of wonderment and amazement to express the greatness of Laylatul Qadr. 
And he's asking the Prophet ﷺ, what will make you fathom Laylatul Qadr? Allah is using the language of wonder, wonder, so that the Prophet ﷺ can just imagine what Laylatul Qadr is. What will make you, Ya Rasulullah, fathom it? And he was the only one there. <laughs> huh? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't even tell us what Laylatul Qadr is. So the Mufassirun said, Laylatul Qadr is the Layla, is the night of constriction. Why constriction? And when Allah tests man and qadara alayhi rizqahu constricts his sustenance for him, constricts, qadara, constricts his sustenance for him, he says, He says, My Lord has, a she, uh, has abased me. So it's the night of constriction. Why? Because all of the angels descend and they ascend in Laylatul Qadr and there's no room, the traffic is too much, the angelic traffic coming into the earth is too much. Like you're going to kiss the black stone and, and you have waves of people coming out and you're, you're trying to go in. That's constriction and that's what's happening in the angelic pathways between the, the earth and the angelic realm above. So it's the Layla of constriction. But then they said, no, it's the night of power. Power in Allah Qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is powerful and Qadr is from power and it's the power, the sheer power of Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam when he seized the Prophet and he covered the Prophet until the Messenger of Allah was about to breathe his last. And then he left me, he released me. Right? So the Prophet ﷺ was brought to three near-death experiences consecutively. From the sheer power of the angel, Allamahu Shadidul Quwa, the one who was possessed of great strength, taught him. And that's Jibreel. The angels aren't these little fairies that you can just flick off your, 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 your shoulder like this. Right? These aren't angels. They're not our angels, that's for sure. You know, they're not our angels trying to get people to fall in love with, another, with one another, just shooting uh, the arrows at people. And then they, they get married out of cupidity. Right? So th these are not our angels. Right? Our angels, our angels have 600 wings. 600. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam in his true form, he had 600 wings that the Prophet sallallahu saw. And he saw every, everywhere in the horizon, he said there was the angel filling up the entire horizon. That, those are our angels. Now, so they said that it's the night of power, but then some of them said, no, it's the night of destiny. It's the night of the decree of Allah, because the decree comes into the, the, the angels bring down the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the coming year. And so this is the night of destiny. We don't even know how to translate Laylatul Qadr. What will make you fathom it? We don't even know how to translate it. We don't even know how to translate it. So what will make us fathom it? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And then some said, Al-Qadr is qima. It's مَا قَدْرُ هَذَا الشَّيْءِ What is the value? What is the estimation of this thing? So it's the night of estimation and great value in which the Qur'an of great value came down through the messenger of great value onto the heart of the messenger of great value to an ummah of great value. Now, this is all the khasais of this ummah through its Prophet So that's Laylatul Qadr, the night of immense value with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know how to translate it. So how are we going to understand it? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةٌ قَدْرٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laylatul Qadr خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْفِشَارِ The night of Al-Qadr is, is better than a thousand months. A thousand months, please bring out your, 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 your calculators. What is a thousand months? It's like worshipping Allah for how, for how long? Huh? 80 what? 83 years. 83 years. Right? 83 years. Allahu Akbar. 83 years. And lunar, it's 85. 85 lunar years. And we, our, our years are lunar. Are they not? 85 years. Allahu Akbar. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? That whatever you do in this month, for Laylatul Qadr, whatever you do on Laylatul Qadr, it's as though you have been doing it for 85 lunar years without sleep, without distraction, without anything. 85 lunar years, right? You give sadaqah, it's as though you gave sadaqah for 85 lunar years. 
you give you you pray it's as though you prayed for 85 million years isn't that incredible isn't that incredible no it's not incredible at all it's not because that's too little 85 years is too little 85 years is too little and whoever told you that it's like 85 years has lied to you through his teeth lying to you too if whoever said it's like worshiping Allah for an entire lifetime you liar you lie on the book of Allah you lie why what does Allah subhanahu wa say he says it's better than a thousand months he doesn't say it's equal to a thousand months he said it surpasses a thousand months and a thousand is the biggest number the Arabs had is it not a thousand is the biggest number that the Arabs had. They didn't have million and billion and milliard and these numbers. They, these are all, they didn't have that. They're counting sheep and camels. That's what they're counting. How many, you know, they're counting sheep and camels. That's, you know, and so what is their million? How, what is a million? What is a million for Arabs? Alf alf. It's a thousand thousands. <laughs> but you're not going to get a bigger number than a thousand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says it surpasses that. And when Allah says it surpasses that, then it's, it's beyond, like siyam itself, fasting itself. The angels don't even know how to record it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi, كُلُّ عَمَلِ ibn Adam لَهُ إِلَّا الصِّيَام فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِبِي All of the deeds belong to the children of Adam except for fasting. That belongs to me and I reward for it personally. I reward for it personally. So the angels don't even know how to record it. They say, just leave this. How do we record this, Ya Allah? Allah says, don't worry about it. I got it. That's on me. That's on me. I reward for that personally. Don't worry. It's not, it's not your concern. That's between me and my, my slave. No? And so that's the same Lord. This is the same Lord who then tells us that Laylatul Qadr surpasses a thousand months. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it surpasses, don't even think about a thousand lifetimes. It's immeasurable. Not one lifetime. Your Lord is much more bountiful than that. Much more bountiful than rewarding you for just one lifetime. Much more gracious than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not withhold from us and say, this night I'll give it to you as though you lived 85 years. Right? No. Much more bountiful. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ عَنْ Therein descend the angels and the spirit by the permission of their Lord on every affair, every errand, every command. The angels and the spirit, Allahu Akbar, that they descend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a verse that Sayyidina Jibreel salam confessed to the Prophet wasallam after the revelation of Surah Al-Duha. After Surah Al-Duha, the Prophet has said, you know, because Duha came, it was the surah of consolation to the Prophet ﷺ after six months, according to Imam al-Bayhaqi, of silence in the skies. No revelation for six months. And the Prophet ﷺ fell into a state of, he, of fear that he has dis, displeased Allah, fallen into the, 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 the disfavor with his Lord. And so Sidna Jibreel ﷺ brings down Surah Al-Duha to cons console the blessed heart of the Prophet ﷺ. After which he said to Sayyidina Jibreel, لَقَدْ اشْتَقْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ That we, we've missed you. We've missed you. And Jibreel ﷺ confessed to him, وَنَحْنُ إِلَيْكَ أَشْوَقْ That our yearning is more than, your, than yours. Our yearning for, for you is more than yours. وَلَكِنْ مَا حَبَسَنِي إِلَّا أَمْرُ رَبِّكَ he says, but the only thing that withheld me from you was the command of your Lord. مَا حَبَسَنِي إِلَّا أَمْرُ رَبِّكْ The only thing that withheld me from you was the command of your Lord. And then he gave him this verse. وَمَا نَتَنَزَّلُ إِلَّا بِأَمْرِ رَبِّكْ We do not descend except by the command of your Lord. You guys got that? So what do, what do we read in Surah Al-Qadr? تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ the angels and the spirit descend therein by the permission of their Lord with every affair. Any difference between the two? Any difference here betwixt the twain? I'll say it again. 
وما نتنزل إلا بأمر ربك. We do not descend except by the command of your Lord. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر. The angels and the spirit descend therein by the permission of their Lord with every affair. Any difference? Hmm? Somebody said it. Command and permission. Exactly. So the other verse said, We do not descend except by the command of your Lord. Surah Al Qadr doesn't say command, it says permission of their Lord, which, which implies what? What does that imply about the angels' descent in Laylat Al Qadr? What? That they sought permission. That they ask Allah, they plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let us descend. Allow us to go into the earth, to be among them, to be among them, to celebrate with them the anniversary between the terrestrial and the celestial, between when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu first beheld the Messenger of Allah sallam, when, when the Prophet sallallahu first laid eyes on Jibreel sallam, and when Jibreel sallam, first laid eyes on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi let us be there on the night that commemorates this incredible union between Jibreel and the Prophet ﷺ. When the Prophet ﷺ was most excited throughout the entire year. He was most excited about, about, about Ramadan. Why? Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه جبريل فيدارسه القرآن The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most generous of all people and he was at his most generous in Ramadan when Jibreel would come to him and so he would recite the Quran with him. So he was, he was so excited every Ramadan that Jibreel would come to him every single night of Ramadan just to review all of the verses that had been revealed up until that point. For the Prophet وسلم, it was it was this quality time now that he had with Sayyidina Jibreel وسلم. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And so the angels want to be here among us on that night when the, whole, the entire earth is celebrating Laylatul Qadr. They want to be with us, celebrating along with us, witnessing these gatherings, witnessing our supplication and our prayer, witnessing all of that, partaking with us and praying for us, seeking for Allah's forgiveness for on our behalf. Now I'm seeking Allah's forgiveness on our behalf. Muhammad, what a gift that He has given to this Ummah. And so the angels fill the, sensitize your hearts to their presence, for they are present among us. They are here with us now, witnessing this and, and, and asking for forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered the forgiveness of the answered the prayers of the angels. And they and they cover us with their wings. That's why there's peace here tonight. Up until the heavens above. This is the promise of the Prophet. And the promise of the Prophet is true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What ruh fiha? What is the ruh? What is the ruh? So they said that the ruh, one of the understandings of the ruh is that it is this immense creature from which Adam received his ruh. It is this angelic being that is the source for the arwah of, of, of Bani Adam. That after I have fashioned him and breathed into him of my ruh, then bow down and prostrate before him. And then others said, no, the ruh is the compassion of Allah. La taqnatu min rawhillah. Don't, don't uh, despair of the compassion of Allah. So the compassion of Allah descends with the angels. Allahu Akbar. This is a night in which Allah's compassion descends. Others said, no, the ruh is the Qur'an itself. Inna awhayna ilayka ruhan min amrina. We have revealed to you a ruh from our very own command. So the Qur'an itself descends into the world. The angels bring the Qur'an itself into the world on Laylatul Qadr. Still others said the ruh is Isa salam, Sayyidina Isa salam, Right? And I'm going to mention this in your presence if you, if you give me permission. Right? You can't even say Jesus in this man's presence without asking permission. Right? Salam. That Isa salam, descends with the angels to check on the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, every Laylatul Qadr. Isa salam. Like, what will make us fathom what this night is? We don't even know what the Ruh is or Qadr. And then still others said the Ruh 
إذ سيدنا جبريل عليه السلام فأرسلنا إليها روحنا فتمثل لها بشرا سويا so we sent to her our روح and he embodied a man in every respect right so, so سيدنا جبريل like the angels and سيدنا جبريل well wait, wait a minute does that make sense that the angels descend and جبريل descends with the, on every affair with the permission of their Lord does that make sense to say the angels and Jibreel that doesn't make sense, does it? Does that make sense? The angels descend and Jibreel. Does it make sense? Doesn't make sense, huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rahman, Fiha Fakihatun wa Nakhlun Urman. But it has fruits. Jannah has fruits. And it has date palms and pomegranates. It has fruits and date palms and what? Pomegranates. The angels descend therein and Jibreel. He's the pomegranates of the angels. <laughs> huh? Isn't this a so so the 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 uh, the fruits and, and and don't think about uh, bananas, apples, pears, you know, these you know the, the everyday fruits. No, pomegranates. Pomegranates. Huh? Pomegranates. And so the angels all descend and Jibreel himself, alayhi salam. Jibreel himself descends with them, right? By the permission of their Lord on every affair, salam. And in warsh you stop, salam. In warsh you stop, salam. And let that marinate a little bit on the hearts, salam. For the Prophet said that for the first three days in Jannah, the only thing that people will be able to say is salam, 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 peace, wholeness, well-being, perfection, soundness. We finally are wholeness. We're whole, right? We're not broken anymore. The dunya broke us. Here we are whole, right? Salam, salam. And so it's a piece of Jannah on earth, Laylatul Qadr. So that the only thing that we experience is salam. Salam. Hiya hatta matla al fajr. That the night will, will, will abide, right? That this, all of this will abide now, right? And Laylatul Qadr will, will endure until the rise of morn. Until the rise of morn. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. If tonight be Laylatul Qadr, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find us striving, searching, pursuing, aspiring in a state of aspiration with our Lord, in a state of yearning for our Lord, in a state of beseeching our Lord on a night just like this. And tonight may be your Laylatul Qadr. It may be your moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It may be your, your few precious uh, uh, prayers that you feel tonight more than any other night. And so this may be your personal Laylatul Qadr with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا أَدْرَاكُمْ Right? And so let us give honor to this night. وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فِإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَ الْقُلُوبِ Whosoever venerates the symbols of Allah, that is from the fear of Allah that is in the hearts. And Laylatul Qadr is one of these great symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of the days of Allah. This is one of the days of Allah. This is one of, this is one of the nights you know, of, of Allah in the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not turn us away deprived from, from, from Ramadan. And the whole thing about Ramadan is that Ramadan was not for the sake of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan is not for the, for the month of Ramadan. It's a pillar of this deen without which the entire deen collapses. These 30 days, they act as a pillar of this religion. And any pillar, any pillar, if it, if it gives way, the entire edifice collapses. So it is a pillar of this deen. And so Ramadan is not for Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan al-ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was brought down. The month of Shawwal is not the month in which the Qur'an is taken back up. 
وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله على محمد